Thank you very much, and thanks to all of you for coming out uh, this morning to listen to me babble on about how important it is to have energy expenditure. Now, as is customary in academic settings, we always show our disclosures, who has supported our research and various activities, and mine are shown on this slide. So non-communicable diseases are the world's biggest health problem. You can all read, you can see the numbers up there. Uh, they cause most of the deaths in the world, and in general, non-communicable diseases are due primarily to unhealthful lifestyles. So groups like yours and mine and many different uh, associations need to be working to help more people practice more healthful lifestyles. Now, according to this report, it says uh, a physical inactivity causes 3.2 million deaths a year. Actually, I think that's a big underestimate because more recently, uh, The Lancet, the week before the 2012 Olympics, devoted an entire issue to physical activity topics. And Professor Aimeen Lee led an effort, collected data from all over the world, were very conservative in how we did these calculations. And you'll note that by eliminating inactivity, 5.3 million deaths could be avoided. And you might say, well, yeah, but there's 7 billion people in the world. Who cares about 5.3 million? But then you look down there and you see, yeah, but that's actually more than smoking. So that's how hazardous inactivity is. And of course, obesity, 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 obesity. Oh my goodness, the world's biggest problem that's ever existed. How, how often do you hear that? on the news, and we see it in the scientific press. And there is so much nonsense out there about this topic I'm trying to bring a little sense to it here with you this morning. Note this, a few years ago I was in England and in the Telegraph, there was a British science festival and this uh, reporter talked to one of the top scientists, led a big research institute in England, and note how many calories a day women were eating in England in 1980. Oh my goodness, can you believe that? And then today, 3,500 calories. So I've actually done the calculations, and if this nitwit is correct, the average British woman now weighs 60 tons. <laughs> I don't think he's right. Look at that bottom statement. There has been no change in energy expenditure. And I find prominent scientists from all over the world frequently, it's all due to people eating too much. There's no change in any energy expenditure. Now, I think you really have to be a nitwit to think there's been no change in energy expenditure in the world over the last several decades. You know, the, the obesity epidemic is the fault of James Watt. He invented that blasted steam engine, and then we went on to this and that and the other thing, and I remember when there was no such thing as a vacuum cleaner, at least in most people's home, or a microwave oven, or all those things that are saving human energy expenditure. We've spent decades making it easier. And in fact, I look around this room, I think everybody is sitting on their rear end, except the guy here giving the talk. So you know, you could all be standing, maybe? So we published a few years ago a report on energy expenditure on the job in the United States. Data from the uh, U.S. Department of Labor, a very big database over the last 50 years, and I suspect everyone in the room could have drawn a slide that looks pretty similar to this service jobs up and up and up and up, mining, manufacturing, goods producing down, down and down. And notice actually it's back a little before these data start in about 1956, growing up a poor boy on a farm in Kansas, working my rear end off. I said, I'm gonna go to college. And grandpa said, yeah, Stevie, get yourself an education. And you could get a job in out of the weather. I mean, that was an absolute highlight there, okay, so, so I did. I went to college, and then I got uh, out of agriculture. But even if I had stayed in agriculture out there on that farm, I wouldn't be spending nearly as many calories on the job today as I did 50, 60 years ago. We've engineered energy expenditure out of life. So it, it, applying complicated mathematical models to all these data. Here's what we come up with. The average American man spends less than 140 calories a day on the job than he did 50 years ago, 120 calories a day less in women. 
Well, what about other things? I mentioned vacuum cleaners and microwave ovens. And uh, so we did another paper on household management energy expenditure. So that's cooking, cleaning, yard work, childcare, et cetera. And we weren't blaming American women. This is just what has happened. You'll notice that it's 1,800 calories less per week in household energy management. Now the obesity experts say that the obesity epidemic can be explained by an excess of 70 to 90 calories a day. So these changes that I've shown you in occupation, household, and then, oh my goodness, getting to work or getting to school. Now, probably none of you did this, but uh, well, I grew up in the country, starting a one-room country school, and how did I get to school? Well, my dad didn't drive me, I'll tell you that. Now, Pat took me. Pat was my horse. And it does, when you ride a horse, that takes more energy than sitting in a car. And then when you get them there, you have to tie them up in the barn, feed them some hay. And when you go get them at the end of the day, what do you have to do? That's right, scoop some stuff up and put it outside on the pile. So we've engineered energy expenditure out of life in just many, many different modes that almost anything we can think of. So we do recognize that inactivity is a major public health problem. In 2008, the United States for the first time issued official physical activity guidelines. Everybody should be getting 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity activity. Although doing something is better than doing nothing. So again, standing here talking is better than sitting. All right. Uh, the physical activity guidelines have just said uh, something is better than nothing, more is better than less, at least up to a point. And everybody, virtually everybody, and there are some people with terrible, terrible you know, illnesses and they're comatose in a bed being fed by a tube. Yeah, their physical activity is probably not uh, the place for them. But almost everyone can be physically active and can benefit. So we have the first ever U.S. National Physical Activity Plan that was released a few years ago. And we identified eight different sectors in society where we need to pay some attention to physical activity. And you'll note parks, recreation, fitness, sports, and that's where, uh, you know, swimming and uh, cycling, going to the gym, working out. But there are a lot of other areas that need to pay some attention to our inactive society. We need to think about community design. We need to think about programs at the workplace. We need to get mass media doing them and so on. Well, again, you can all read these eight sectors. So we have a huge problem of declining energy expenditure, leading to big problems of non-communicable disease. We need to do something about it. Thank you.